Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I thought it would be kind of fun if I showed you how to make a mini journal using part of the printed portion of the So Artsy subscription box items that I have. So with this mini journal, you get six pieces of paper. You get two journal covers. So here is one, and here is the next one. Then you get four journal pages that are two-sided. So there's two. I like the dress form, the way she's used this. Norella and I are doing a collaboration together. She has done the digital artwork. I provide some of my mixed media pages as well as my stencil designs. And this is the other two pages. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some things from my stash to add more pages and let's make a journal. The first thing I've got is some book pages, and I went ahead and trimmed them off camera so that they're at least the same width as one of the journal pages. They're a little bit shorter, but I want to decorate these. So we're gonna get out the stencil that comes with the So Artsy kit, and let's spray and see what kind of prettiness we can add to this paper. All right, so I have my spray box here, and I'm gonna take two of these pages and lay them in the box and I think what I'm gonna do I'm gonna spray through the stencil and I'm also going to mop up so I'm going to use these other pages to mop up off of the stencil here in just a moment so I'm going to use the color that comes with the so artsy kit so we're going to spray that and then part of the add-on kit is some other colors that you can get so I'm going to use one of the kind of a purpley color that comes in the add-on kit just kind of adds a little bit more color and then I'm also going to use this pink that's in the add-on kit all right so I've got all three colors on there now I'm going to take some of these book pages and lay them on top of the stencil and that's going to soak up some of that design I'm going to get another piece of paper just to soak up around the outside edge because if you go to handle your stencil and it's still wet you'll transfer all of that goodiness all to your hand so and sometimes you can get some interesting pages with the void. All right, so we'll lift these up and let's take a look at how these turned out. I like them. I think they look pretty good. I think the only thing I want to do is let me choose which one because I want one as a pocket and one as the page. And I think I like this one. So what I'm going to do is lay it back in the box to see how... That page came out just because we had the void, so it's gonna be a fun journal page. I'm gonna flip these over, because I want this design, and I'm gonna spray the backside just a little bit with Tattered Angels. And what that'll do is kinda of help pull that design to the other side just a little bit. It adds a little bit of glimmer on the other side as well. So this is going to be the page. We'll turn these like that. So I'm going to do two at a time. And then I'm going to take this one and it's going to become a pocket on this page. So you'll have a little place to add some things, tuck spot if you will. And those we're just going to fit. And I'll do both of these. I'm going to glue them together using Aline's Tacky Glue. I'll glue down the side. You could use washi tape if you want. You could also sew with your sewing machine if you so choose. And I think what I'm going to do is glue them, and then I've got an idea I want to do. Just put glue down the sides here, fold it back up on itself, flip it over, and then put some glue on this side. All right, I've decided I want to add some decoration to these pages. Even though it's a mini journal, we can still have fun with it. So I've got some archival ink, and then I have one of the stitches from shabby stitches so i'm going to ink this up and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to pretend like we're sewing around this page so kind of lining it up and i'm going to stamp and i just chose to come from the center out because sometimes it's hard to line them up and it should be covered up when i fold the page in half and i'm just going to rotate this page i'm going to stamp up the sides and then i'm going to curl across the top again like I did on the bottom. So isn't that pretty cute, adding the stitches on there? So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and fold this, I'm gonna set it aside, and I'm gonna do the other page the same way. 
I like how that comes together with the stitches on there. It just kind of finishes it off. All right, so I've got some notebook paper. You know, we, we sometimes save pieces of paper that were left over in a notebook or something. I think I had these because I from a college course I did a long time ago. So I thought, well, I'll get them out and let's spray these with some tattered angels and use them in our little mini journal. So I'm just going to lay it into the same spray box as we did before. This time I'm going to choose a different stencil only because, you know, it gives a little bit of variety. This is my arrows stencil. We're going to use the same colors that we used before, but it's going to be a different pattern. So I'm going to start with the purple, kind of go down the middle, maybe on the side there. I'm going to go with the pink, really close to the purple. And then I'm going to fill in with the blue. Make sure you shake them. To get all that mica up. I like it. It's kind of a, a ombre effect. So now I'm going to take this stencil and lay it on top, or this page and lay it on top of the stencil. And I like how it pulls through the page. And I'm just going to go in here and spritz this. And so it'll have a little bit more color to it on this side. And then the other side will have glimmer because of the mop up. And then I'm going to pick this one up and I'm going to flip it over and spray the back side just same so it'll have some glimmer on the back all right i'm going to dry these pages and then i'll be right back we're going to trim them down to fit the journal and then we'll start putting the journal together you know a lot of people ask me how do i come up with what size paper to cut and most of it is dictated by the fact that I'm using a printed item, the size of that piece of paper when printed is eight and a half by 11. And so I just kind of base it off of that. Sometimes it's because that's what size of scrap of piece of paper I have. A lot of people ask about, you know, journal cards, why I chose the size I do. Well, it's because I got a little stack of them that's already pre-cut to that, that were from a gift that was given to me. So what I've done is I've folded the page in half and just kind of marked it where the center is and I'm going to trim that. And then I know that this page is a little bit wider than what is in my journal. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut off the side where the holes are because it'll give it a little cleaner look. It'll look like it's notebook paper, but not completely because you won't have the holes down the side. So I'm just kind of lining it up using a, another one of the pages to guide where I need to cut it. I don't actually measure and I'll trim this piece off. All right, so I've got these pages and I've got a couple more that I've made. And I think what I want to do next is um, sometimes I decorate pages before I bind the journal. Sometimes I decorate pages after I bind the journal. And I thought what I would do really quickly is grab a couple of sewing theme stamps and just kind of stamp on each one of these pages. So I've got, they're a little bit bigger, but I've got a sewing machine image. I've got a measuring tape. I've got spools of thread. I think these will be good to use. So I'm kind of just getting a few of them out here and uh, I'll get some ink and let's, uh, let's stamp a little bit. Okay, so I've got my first little two pages here. I'm just gonna stamp them all the same on this little setup, if you will. So I'm not going back and forth between stamps. And the first one I've got is this spool of thread with a spool on its side. I think it would look kind of cute, even if it's going off the page. And then when this page is folded, you'll see it going off the page. I think that'd be kind of cute. So I'm gonna do that again up here. All right, and since we're doing the thread, I'm gonna go ahead and stamp it up here in this corner off the page. And I think that's good enough for those sides, so I'm just going to flip it over. And I've got, I've got a big pair of scissors. I think it might look kind of neat if we stamp it going down the side. Yeah, so you can kind of see it there. 
and I've got a pattern so let's stamp the pattern on this side so it doesn't take up too much of the writing space but you get a little design so let me do that again so I'm just going to repeat this process just kind of stamping on each one and uh, flipping them over and doing the other side that was a measuring tape I thought the measuring tape kind of looks cool but just stamping around the outside edge would be kind of cute using the shabby stitches not trying to be perfect just just for decoration you know if you're ever in doubt about a rubber stamp stamp it off onto a scrap piece of paper before you use it so you know which way it needs to go <laughs> or what it says if it says something it may not be what you want to use in that particular journal and all of these uh, sewing theme stamps are in my shop uh, you can do a search for sewing or sew and then uh, it'll have a listing that'll show you all the things that are related to sewing i'm trying to put them all together for you i like that and this one is a like a needle book let me put we'll put that up here kind of going off the page a little just a little design I like the way the pattern looked. Got this old sewing machine. Might look good right here. Oh, I should have stayed in just a little bit. Here we go. And we got two more pages. I like that better using the front half of the sewing machine. Okay, I've got all the pages done. So what I'm going to do now is fold all of them and get them ready to put together my journal. Okay, so what I've done is, is I've set it up in stacks of two, the two journal covers, printed pages, mop up pages that I created, two 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 and then two uh, you can't probably see that one there but all I'm going to do is just start picking these up and stacking them together and then what I'll do is I'll spend a moment to get all the pages even you know if a page is shorter than other pages you want to put them in the center like this page is a little bit shorter so I'm getting it centered from top to bottom and then I'm going to use my book binding tools I've got a little pouch that says junk journal tools and I'm going to grab my binder clips, my giant paper clips, if you will, to put this together. And I'm going to repeat this with the other one and then I'll bind them. All right, so I've got a little template here. It's just a piece of paper that was the same size as the height of my journal. I put a hole in the center and then about an inch in from each edge. I'm going to use my craft pick by Tim Holtz Tonic Studio. I'm going to make sure that my pages are in a V along with the cover and we're going to do a pamphlet stitch. I'm going to punch three holes. I've got a piece of fun foam to protect my surface. You could use a foam book. There's lots of things that you can do but this just kind of ensures that all the pages are nested together. And we'll punch our hole there. I'm going to repeat that on the other journal so then I can put away my punching tools. And retract that. That's what I like about this pick because I had one that didn't retract and I had stabbed myself. <laughs> it's not a pretty sight. All right, so then I've got some wax linen thread. And I'm going to cut a link that is three times the height of the journal. So I'm doing one two and three I'm making two journals so I'm just going to go ahead and cut a longer piece it doesn't have to be exactly three times because I'll have a little bit of wiggle room using a longer piece I've got a bookbinder's needle and I do offer these in my shop a lot of people ask you know where did you get the needles what size needle this is a four inch needle it's steady uh, sturdy and heavy duty so you're going to have a steady hand with it because you can hang on to it 
and it doesn't make too big of a hole in your journals. You could use a smaller needle and a smaller thread, but I find that wax linen thread, when I'm binding it in this method, seems to hold up better than anything thinner, which can break. So we don't want our journals to fall apart. So I'm just doing a pamphlet stitch. I've got some other tutorials that have a really straightforward, no other talking other than how to put it together. If you need that tutorial, just let me know and I can help link you up to it or you can just do a search for a pamphlet stitch on my channel. I hope you'll check out my Facebook group, The Friendly Junk Journal People. We are over 20,000 members strong. And we have a great group of ladies that help run the group as well as doing swaps and sharing our makes. So I hope you do check that out. I've also got a smaller group called By Linda Israel. If you'll check that one out as well, that kind of lets you know when I'm going live, uh, if I've got any specials, if I've got new products, if I'm going to be doing an event. And you might want to know about that. That's where you can find out that information is by Linda Izzo. You can also uh, reach me in that group a lot easier because you can tag me on a post and I'll see it in that group. All right, so I've got two journals that I made. I'm just putting away my tools. And let's take a look at them. So here's the first one with the sewing machine on the cover. And then I went ahead and set it up so that when you have the first page it's a printed page you could do it ever way you like there's no wrong way and then we're just going to flip it over and that's kind of funny that there's the scissors here and that just happened to fall on that page so you get the scissors down the line here you see the sewing you know kind of peeking through and then this is one of the printed pages but i think it blends so well that you really can't tell that they're not Part of the sewing kit so artsy I'm liking it I like the way it come out I hope you liked it too I hope you see how easy it is to put together a quick little junk journal we use a book page we use some notebook paper we use some copy paper those pages that I showed that I stamped on those were just the same concept of mop-up papers it's a mop-up paper using a lace stencil there's the arrow stencil again. I like it. I like it a lot. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Of course, comment below if you have any questions or comments that you want to make about this So Artsy kit. I will be doing a live uh, workshop in Yukon, Oklahoma on August the 24th. So if you are interested in traveling to Oklahoma to play with the So Artsy, check out my Facebook event on Linda Israel on Facebook. Alrighty, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fabulous day. Bye.